Hey guys, I'm here to share a message um, that is very, very important. Very important to the Lord. And I made a video yesterday and spent all day trying to upload it. And they put a lock on it and would not let it share. So I am here basically remaking that video and tweaking it a little bit because I have more to add now. So... I'm going to start with a whole bunch of things, and you guys will see how they all kind of line up. Um, I'm going to start with a dream that I just had. Um, I'm off of work today because I didn't have any work for me, and I took a nap and I had a dream. And in my dream, um, a whole bunch of things were happening. The Lord was revealing uh a teaching message to me but also there was a beautiful thing in that uh, dream as well um, with this new mission that he wants me to partake in so I'm gonna explain the teaching part so in the dream I went to the store and in the back room was a narrow closet and I asked if I could go in there and look at the supplies they had to buy and the lady said, okay, but only look at the stuff that's on this side of the closet, not on the other side. And I was like, okay. So I go in there and I'm looking through boxes on the ground level of the closet. And I'm going through and there's all these like coloring books and they're shaped in all these different shapes. And they're, they got hard plastic covers, not like regular paper coloring books. And I noticed that they were all, um, all the themes were mostly... Uh, not quite so popular uh, children's TV shows and then some popular ones here and there and I'm going through them and I'm looking there's tons and tons and I'm thinking oh this might be good for my daughter this might be good for my other daughter this might be good for my son blah blah, blah going through them and I was like you know I, this this all seems like you know just cheap quality gifts I'm not really that interested and then um, at one point, now this is interesting, the lady who uh, let me go in there who did not want me to look at the other side, um, she came and sat at the other end of the closet on a stool watching me. And she was very paranoid. And I remember being really uncomfortable with how bad her trust issues were. It was annoying me. Because I'm like, lady, I'm not going to steal anything. Like, come on now. And... Um, and then I, you know, glance over at the other shelf out of curiosity, the ones that I wasn't supposed to, you know, take anything from. And I see on the ground level, there's um, a bunch of women's high heel shoes. And I don't know why I made this comment, because even as I was saying it, it almost felt like a lie. It felt like I was lying. You ever have one of those random moments where, like, you randomly tell a lie and you're like, ew, why did I just say that? That's not even true. I'm sorry. <laughs> Like, it was one of those, and I was like, what? And um, and I spoke out to her, and I was like, I was like, oh, I could never wear those heels. And she kind of, like, quickly and almost sarcastic, with a sarcastic tone, replies, sure you could. And, um, and I was like, to further my defense, which was, like, ugh. I was like, no, not those ones, but the ones with the straps next to them. I really like ones with straps, blah, blah, blah. And they were pretty high heels. But even after I said that, I'm like, why did I say that? Like, I could wear those. I could definitely wear those. And then I turned around, just kind of shook it off because I'm like, what is even, <laughs> why? And I, so I turn around and I stood up. And I stood up and I'm looking at the top shelf on the side where I am permitted to search on. And I see these different jewelries and a lot of them looked kind of tacky. And I was at first drawn to this piece of jewelry that reminded me of my mother. And I was like, oh, and I took a closer look. And I was like, no, this isn't like necessarily worth buying. And I realized I'm like, gosh, none of the like, I don't feel like buying anything in here. Nothing is really worth, you know, buying yet. Here I am still looking, trying to find things. It's like I just wanted to shop, which I'll confess to you guys right now. I've had quite the issue with shopping and I need to stop. And if any of you share in that issue, then you need to do the same thing. But I just wanted to confess that and I'll get into that in a minute. So then I'm looking at the stuff and I'm like, I think I'm not, you know, I'm not really that interested. 
And then this cute little blonde girl, about maybe four years old, something like that, comes up and hugs me. And I look down at her and she's saying, my grumpy, my grumpy. And I was like, oh, I have a grumpy too. Because my, uh, my one grandfather that's still alive, I call him grumpy. I always have. Ever since I was little, I could never say grampy. And that's what they wanted me to call him. And it was gumpy. And then it became grumpy. And he's just grumpy. So anyway, I was like, oh, you're grumpy. I have one too. And um, she's just hugging me. And she's got this sweet look on her face. And now I'm connecting what's happening in the dream to real life. So lately, um... I don't even know how long, the last, like, year or two now, um, children have really been responding to me. Children have been, and this is everywhere, customers' kids, my friends' kids, um, like, kids just are drawn to me more and more lately. And I've always kind of thought, well, that's probably because of my walk with the Lord and I have the Holy Spirit with me. Um, but they've really been drawing to me a lot lately, and I connected that in my dream. And I was thinking, like, wow, this this sweet little girl, and she's looking at, up at me with this sweet little face, and I'm just like, <laughs> and um, and I was like, you want you want to pray for your grumpy? We can pray for your grumpy. And then her family comes in, and they're calling her over, and and I was like, oh man, I really wanted to pray with her for her grumpy. And so I turned around and I started praying for him, uh, kind of to myself, which I do stuff like that a lot. I'll just turn and pray you know, whether out loud or quietly. And, um, and I could have sworn I heard her praying as well in her own little way. So that was really sweet. So now I'm going to share a dream that I had the morning of the 13th, I want to say. Um, I had a dream. Oh, no, before I do that, sorry. So I, I woke up from this dream. It's my birdies. They're chirping. Anyway, um, I woke up from the stream, and I felt the Lord tell me, what was that? I just wrote it down in my journal so I wouldn't forget. Oh, Holy Spirit, please guide me. Guide me in your truth. Was it that you told me, Lord? Oh, he was telling me not to worry about getting gifts. Um, because no matter what gifts they were, because I was sitting there thinking, you know, I'm trying to think symbolism here. Like, oh, those gifts, you know. I'm looking through them and I'm like, oh, these coloring books represent this show and this movie. And, you know, there's all this Freemasonry hidden in all this. And basically what the Lord was revealing to me is it doesn't matter what gifts they are or what company they're being made from, what they represent. They're all of the world. And he told me not to worry about gifts at all. Don't worry about gifts because he is coming with the ultimate gift. So I was like, okay, Lord. So I know that was definitely for me because of my little shopping issue I've had. And if any of you, um, you know, especially women out there, I know women can have this issue. Um, just, you know, pray on it and work on that. Uh, pull back. You know, we all have our horrible habits. I left just about every vice that I had and then I got into shopping. So it's it's never good. This worldly stuff, it's 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 never good. So anyway... There was that. Um, and then, so now the morning of the 13th, I had a dream that uh, I was staying at this house with my husband. It was someone else's house. And we were there kind of on vacation. They were letting us use all their stuff. And I look out the window and there's this table with all these towels stacked on it. I was like, huh. And then I see this mass group of children running up. And there's this huge parking lot, like... Um, outside of the house and they're all running up like they're running from the rain and I'm like okay come on come on come on and I'm gathering them all together and I'm laying them down in twos on the parking lot ground and I'm like all right you guys all lay down in twos and I'm covering them each uh, group of two kids with towels and I run out and I'm like oh my gosh I need more so I'm running in the house and I'm looking for small blankets to go and finish covering the rest of the children that are out there now this is a part that's going to sound kind of uncomfortable but it was in the dream and I'll explain uh what it meant so there was a teenage boy who came up and I knew that he had the intention of raping me and I was just really just bothered by it of course 
Um, and But I started preparing myself and cleaning myself. Like preparing myself to be raped as if I had no other way around it. So that was the end of the dream. Now I'm going to speak about that part. Now what that, the Lord kind of brought to my mind about that is that boy, that teenage boy that wanted to rape me represented this wickedness that wants to take from me. And by me just kind of giving up and being like, oh, I'm just going to prepare for it. There's no way around it. It's kind of an area in my mind, in my heart that I think the Lord, you know, wants to work on where um, just because evil is coming, um, just because there's an evil trying to take from me, it doesn't mean that I should be like, well, this is to be expected. God knows this is going to happen. There's really no way around it. So I'm just going to let them take from me. And uh, it is what it is. I think the Lord's teaching me that I need to have a better attitude, that there is another way. Um, you know, I could have kicked him out. I could have you know, fought, rebuked, put on my armor, so on and so forth. So I think that's the Lord just trying to um, clean up my mentality a little bit and give me uh, a better and more stronger um, perspective on stuff like that. So I just wanted to explain that. And if any of you are dealing with that, hopefully that kind of, you know, clicks something in your head just like it did with mine. So anyway, um, when I woke up from that dream, I started talking to my husband about it and I looked over at my uh, Bible app because I, I've i seen on YouTube that there's a lot of followers and um, other people on YouTube who will fall asleep with their Bible app on all night. And I was like, wow, that's such a great idea. What a good way to soak in the word. You girlies are so loud. Am I interrupting you? I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, what a good way to... Uh, Oh, where was I? I get so easily distracted sometimes. Um, oh, to soak in the word while you're sleeping. So I started doing that that night, that night before the 12th going into the 13th. And I woke up and I paused the app when I woke up. And this is what it landed on. Leviticus 20. And I read through 1 through 6. So... All right, Leviticus 21 through 6. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Say further to the people of Israel, Any of the people of Israel or of the aliens who reside in Israel. Now in the version I read, it said children. So I'm just going to kind of replace that. The children who reside in Israel who give any of their offspring to Malek shall be put to death. The people of the land shall stone them to death. I myself will set my face against them and will cut them off from the people because they have given their offspring to Malek, defiling my sanctuary and profaning my holy name. And if the people of the land should ever close their eyes to them when they give their offspring to Malek and do not put them to death, I myself will set my face against them and against their family and will cut them off from among their people them and all who follow them in prostituting themselves to Malek. If any turn to mediums and wizards prostituting themselves to them, I will set my face against them and will cut them off from the people. All right, I'm going to move because these birds are so loud. Um, so that really convicted me. That really convicted me. I felt the Holy Spirit moving through me like crazy when I read that. And I knew, I knew that what that was saying was we need to speak up and speak out against this, this evil abomination that is happening right now. These blasphemies that are happening where our children are subject to this evil thing right now. And that wicked parents out there are sending their children off to receive this wicked, abominable thing into their precious bodies right now. And so I felt convicted, you know, especially that line about anyone turning their eye against it. You turn your eye away from what's happening. You're basically just as bad as the people who are sending their kids off to this. And I was like, Okay, Lord, 
I see what you're saying to me. Uh, I need to do something about this. I need to speak out. Now, another thing about a week or two prior to those dreams, I had a dream. I had a bunch of dreams and there was a bunch in it. I just can't remember. The only thing I remember from the dream was that I was walking up a cliff leading a group of children and I was speaking out against and uh, trying to protect them. And that was it. That's all I remember from the dream. So, oh, and another thing that the Lord had brought back to my memory, when I went on my honeymoon with my husband back in March of this year, we were, we stopped at this mall and we were walking around. We noticed that there was a bunch of adults waiting in line to get that. And as we were walking through the mall, I saw a sign that said bold. And I felt like the Lord was calling me to be bold. I just didn't know what or how exactly. So we leave the mall and I see that the line grew like to the point where it was wrapping around the mall. And I was so uncomfortable. I felt sick to my stomach, sick in my heart. I just felt sick from it. And so I drive off and I get down the road and I was like, no, I have to do something. And I turn the car around and mind you guys, I was ill prepared, but I felt like I had to do something. So I turned back around me and my husband, and this isn't a dream. This really happened. This, this happened on our honeymoon. So I turn back around, go back to the mall. My husband's in the passenger seat. I open his passenger window and I'm kind of talking over him. There's a line of people getting that and I'm speaking out and I'm like are you guys in line to get the you know you know what and they're like yes and I was like don't get it and they're just kind of smiling all snarkily like and oh why and ready to have you know a whole uh you know political dispute with me basically and I had this bible in my hand that I had pulled out and I really wanted to give it to someone. And I'm just holding the Bible. I'm like, please, someone take this. And I was like, please, like begging all of them in the line, please don't get this. Please, someone come take this Bible. Please, someone come take this. And the one husband who was being really, you know, just cocky and arrogant, he starts walking out and he makes it halfway into the road and he's laughing, ready to take this book from me. And his wife yells, I, I believe it was his wife, don't go right, you get back there, you don't know what kind of germs she had or about, something along those lines. And, you know, people are laughing and stuff. And I'm waiting for a minute and no one would come take it. And so I was praying and I turned the car around and I go to leave and I drive up the parking lot and I just broke down. I started crying for them because I... I felt this pain in my heart. I felt like I was crying with the Lord. I felt this pain in my heart like like they were lost. And like like they were going off to the slaughter. And all I could think about was, you know, if that were me, I would want someone to do that for me. I would want someone to come and speak out and try to save me. So that happened. And I didn't really fully understand at the time because I was like, wow, I was really ill-prepared. I didn't have much to really argue with these people about. No one came and took the Bible. No one left the line. Um, no one came and asked questions. Like, there was none of that. But, you know, I was thinking to myself, and I think this was, you know, the Lord comforting me. And I was talking to friends about it later on that, uh, that the Lord may have planted some seeds that day. And even if no one left that line and even if they all got it. At least maybe one of them, if not a bunch of them, will go back and talk to other people about that crazy lady who tried to defer them from getting that thing. And uh, maybe some seeds were planted. I don't know. But I also, that was brought back to my memory. And I believe that that was to prepare me for this mission that's coming ahead that the Lord wants me to partake in. Just like how Jesus was in the uh, desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And I believe a part of that was to prepare him for the temptations he was going to face um, leading to the cross and on the cross. So all these things were kind of brought to my mind. And uh, I have some verses that I want to share with you guys. So 
here's one verse, Matthew 18, 6. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Think about that. If any of you are considering to fill your child with this wicked abomination, or if you know anyone who is thinking of doing this, and if you feel, I pray you feel convicted by the Holy Spirit to speak up and speak out for these children. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Guys, I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to do this. If we're still here, I don't know if we'll still be here, but if we're still here and if anything pops up before then, the Lord convicts me to do something or speak up, then I will need to be obedient and do absolutely that. Um, but so far, I know that at the school that my children are going to, the next event for this wicked thing is on the 30th and me and my husband and I'm going to gather my best friend and his woman to are planning to go and uh, protest and this time I'm coming with ammo this time I'm coming prepared with the Holy Spirit I'm coming with ammo and I'm coming with the armor of God so Ephesians 6 starting at 12 for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will, not, which with, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. So it's time to put on our armor. It's time to pray for the Lord to give us boldness, to give us courage, to go out there with our armor on the front lines and to speak out against this evil. So I pray, I pray, I pray, Lord Jesus, please, Please come through the hearts and minds of every viewer watching this. I pray that you put a strong conviction in their hearts to stand up for what is right, to stand up for your truth, to help with whatever they can in whatever way they can to pr protect these children. Whether it's a conversation with one person, whether it's a conversation with a group of people that they overhear, whether it's standing out and protesting, no matter what it is, Lord, I pray that you speak to them in a time when children need to be spoken for and protected. And I pray that seeds are planted through all of your people, Lord, through your whole body of Christ, that we may go out and plant those seeds of truth for you and that people will turn around from their wicked ways and that they will remove their children from this evil abomination that they want to fill them with. In Jesus' name, and I cover by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, that's all I have to share. Um, I pray that, I pray that that spoke out to you um, as deeply as that spoke out to me. God bless. Bye, guys.